Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to integrate functions that have square roots of quadratic type functions in them. I'm going to motivate the subject, I'm going to give you an example and some, some general rules for um, knowing um, what to do when. Now, at the heart of this method is trig substitutions. And with trig substitutions, like any kind of substitution, you want to take a difficult integral, make a substitution, and produce something simpler or that's simple to integrate. Okay, so I'll show you how that works in a minute. Let me share my screen with you and uh, we can get down to business. Okay, so let me give you an example of something that we're going to look at today before I get into this. Here's an example here. Okay, think of A as some, say, positive number. It could be 1, it could be 3. We're integrating with respect to x, and we've got this power 3 on 2 down the bottom. So we want to evaluate that. Now, you could say, well, strictly speaking, that, that doesn't look like a square root, but a squared plus x squared all to the power 3 and then square root. So it really does involve a square root. Okay, so there are three um, cases to look at. We're going to use trig substitutions. I'm not, the, the, I have mentioned these hyperbolic substitutions over here, but the examples I'm going to use actually don't use any of those. So I'll leave you um, to, to think about those. If we have a square root of a squared minus x squared, we can try the substitution x equals a sine theta. So in this case, what we would do is compute the associated differentials. So dx equals a cosine theta d theta. And then, then we would sub those two things into the integral that we're working with. If we have an integral involving something like square root a squared plus x squared, we can try either of these substitutions. And in that case, we would have dx equals a sec squared theta d theta from the first one. And in the second case, we differentiate hyperbolic sine, you'll get hyperbolic cos. Okay, and lastly, if you have an integral involving square root x squared minus a squared, you can try a x equals a sec theta or a cosh theta. In that case, you would have dx, so if you differentiate sec, you get sec theta tan theta. And for this one, let's just put it out here, you would get... Um, dx equals a shine theta d theta, okay? Okay, so this looks kind of complicated on a first viewing, and the idea, remember, is to take something difficult, make a substitution, and make it simpler. Okay, well, we are going to um, uh, do that. So let's see how it works. Here is an example that we're going to discuss, okay? But a really good question here is, when do I actually get integrals that involve these square root signs? I want to discuss that first, okay? So we'll get to this in a minute, but a, like a really uh, important part of mathematics is actually motivating why we're doing the things we do. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Let me actually show you an example. Okay, applications matter. Yes, they do. So suppose we have a wire. And the wire sits in, say, the XY plane. And it lies along the curve, say, Y equals X squared on 2. Okay, and it's between x equals a and x equals b. So this little orange piece is going to be the, the piece of our wire that we're interested in. 
and suppose that um, the wire has a constant density, uh, say delta, mass per unit length. Okay, so it could be uh, you know uh, grams per centimeter or something like that, or grams per millimeter. Okay, well, it can be shown that the total mass of this section of wire is given by the following formula. Okay, here's our f, and notice I've got a derivative here. So if I take this f here and I differentiate it, the two will come to the front, and I'll just be left with x. Now, if I put the x into this mass formula, I get 1 plus x squared in there and a square root sign. So this is an example, of, uh, an important example, where I want to compute the total mass of a piece of wire. I'm given the position of the wire, and I'm told that the mass is uh, has a constant density. Uh, the, 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 the wire has a constant density. I can use this formula to come up with an integral involving a square root sign. So that is one example of an integral that naturally arises with this kind of um, square root sign. And A would be 1 in this case, OK? OK? All right. So, so, so that's the, the motivation. Let's get back and actually do a problem. Okay, all right, so evaluate this. Well, remember this is just this. So it really does involve a square root sign. So if we go back to our little table that, that I showed you before, it would be the middle case. So I'm just going to use the, the, simple, the, the, the basic trig substitution, x equals a tan theta, and see where it gets us. Okay? All right. So we're going to let x equal a tan theta. a is just a number here. So... Um, dx, if I differentiate tan, I get sec squared. So dx is going to be a sec squared theta d theta. So let's sub this in for all the x's and this in for the dx's. And we'll get the following. Thus we have the following. All right, so I is going to be, all right, so replace dx with that. Uh, and I'll put the d theta in, in a minute. a squared plus x squared. So, that's, so x squared is going to be a squared tan squared theta. Okay. And I'm just using this 3 on 2 again. Okay, so now you're probably looking at this and going, "Well, hang on, Chris, come on. This is this is far this is far more complicated looking than this. I thought this was supposed to make things simpler, not more difficult. Come on, Chris, what are you doing? Well, I'm going somewhere with this. We can now make things simpler. Okay, so a squared plus a squared tan squared theta. We can use the relationship between tan squared and sec squared to get that. Okay, so we know that. 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta. Okay, so if I can, I've got a common factor of a squared, I can either bring that out the front or I can factor it out and replace 1 plus tan squared with sec squared. Okay. All right, so. Um, in there, I'm going to get a squared sec squared theta. Okay. And now, I can use my power laws. Okay, I've got a squared there, a squared there, and a power 3 on 2. So, 
basically you multiply through, the twos are going to cancel out with the half, and I'm going to get something like this. Okay, so the a squared to the power 3 on 2 is going to become a cubed. The sec squared to the 3 on 2, well, the 2s are going to cancel out. I'm going to get sec cubed theta, d theta. Now it's starting to look a bit, little bit simpler. Some of the a's are going to cancel. Some of the secs are going to cancel. So I can come up with the following. Okay, I'm going to get 1 on a squared on the bottom, which we can take out the front because it's just a, a constant and that we're integrating with respect to theta. I'm going to get something like this. Okay, now you may look at this and go, well, come on, how do I integrate 1 on sec theta? Well, remember, sec theta equals 1 on cos theta. So 1 on sec is just cos. No, uh, Okay, so I know how to integrate cosine or cos. It'll give me sine. That's, that's nothing there. And I'll get down to the following. Cos goes to sine. I'll put in my constant of integration. And it looks like I'm finished. But hang on, I've got thetas here, and I started with x's. So what I would like to do is recover the things that I started with, with in x's, okay? So how do I do that? Well, let's go back to our original substitution, okay? I'm going to draw a little right angle triangle over here based on that substitution here. Now, x equals a tan theta. If I rearrange that, I get tan theta equals x over a. Now from basic trig I know if I have a right angle triangle and I let one of the angles be theta, this basically says that tan equals x over, tan of this angle equals x over a. Opposite over adjacent. So the opposite length will be x and the adjacent length will be a. Okay. Now, because it's a right angle triangle, I can use Pythagoras to get the length of the third of the hypotenuse, the third side in this case. It's the following: x squared plus a squared. Okay, so square root of x squared plus a squared. Now, you may look at this and go, "Well, come on, Chris, why are you drawing this right angle triangle?" The important thing is that once we have this, we can then calculate the sine of that angle. Now, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of this theta will be x over root x squared plus a squared. Okay, and that is our final answer. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter where you put the theta, you could put the theta up here, the x then would be down there, the a would be up there, it, it, it doesn't matter. Okay? So, hopefully, you can you can see a, a bit of a pattern here, uh, and it's, it's, it's a common theme for a lot of these questions. You identify which case you're dealing with here, and you make an appropriate substitution. Then, you simplify, perhaps using one of these basic um, uh, identities. Remember, cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. That's another one. You simplify until you get something that you can integrate. And then lastly, you can get back to the x's or the things that you started with, okay, using this, this right angle triangle. Okay? Okay, so that's a, a basic example involving these trig substitutions. The method is um, quite repetitive, and the um, the idea is it, the general theme is always the same. You're starting with something that's complicated. You want to make an appropriate substitution to simplify these things. Now, in these problems, we identified which of the three cases we were dealing with from our little table, made the appropriate substitution, 
simplified that using identities, and then we did the, the integration with respect to theta, and finally wrote everything in terms of x. If you have any questions, any comments, please put them in the comment section below. Um, thanks again for all your support. I really enjoy reading your comments and getting feedback from you. If there's any videos you'd like me to do um, this semester, just let me know and um, I'll try to do my best. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye.